Welcome to the Top m and Entrepreneurs. Today, my guest is Justin Cook from Empire Flippers. And according to Inc. Magazine, he's the number one buyer and seller of online websites, SaaS companies, etc. And 2021, he launched Web Street, which used to be uh, Empire Flippers Capital, to raise money to help online operators acquire bigger companies and uh, get investors a return. So that is what we're going to talk about today on how you can qualify for that and see how he raises capital. Welcome to the show, Justin. Thanks for having me on, John. I appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, so let's uh, rewind a little bit. You and I have history because many, many years ago, I sold my e-commerce company through Empire Flippers, and it sold within 72 hours. So you guys did a great job. Thanks, man. I appreciate for full it, yeah. listing. <laughs> it, it's crazy when they go that quick, right? You're like, is it going to sell? Like, what's going to happen? A lot of our sellers come to us and they're like, What's the process like? Is it be okay? And sometimes they sell really quick and sometimes it takes a lot longer. You you were on the lucky end of it. We are talking before the show. One of the things is if you sell for full list really quickly, you're like, maybe I should have got more money. But then if you're waiting three, four, or five months, you're like, oh, maybe I should have charged less. So there's always a balance yeah, this, play there. Look, I was, I, I was happy. I, I, I didn't have any second thoughts. I mean, it's just passed through my head a couple of times, but I didn't have any second thoughts. I was done selling hearing aids four or five years, owned it. You know, it was kind of, uh, I bought it, did a little bit distressed, turned it around and, uh, I was happy with the, the process. So cool, man. Good to hear. Yeah. And so you've been doing this for quite some time and I know Joe, they all work out of, what is it? Uh, Vietnam? Yeah, well, funny enough, I'm in Vietnam right now. I have a home in uh, North Houston. So I spend yeah. time there, but I split time. So I do a little bit of Asia, a little bit of Europe and uh, a little bit of the U S um, my business partner, Joe is based out of Manila. And he Manila. has a place there. He travels a bit for work and, and for fun, but he has like a home base in Manila. So, yeah. And then we have a distributed team. So our employees work, you know, we have Americans living in Prague. We've got Australians living in Hong Kong. People are all over the world. Um, you know, it's a new age, right? You can live and work anywhere as long as you have a good internet connection and, you know, a, a phone you can use and that kind of thing. Yeah. And those sites are being built and sold all over the world, too. That's right. How many yeah. sites do you think you've sold since launch in Empire Flippers? God, a few thousand, um, several thousand. I know the total volume. So we've done about, um, not quite, I can't say it yet, but almost $500 million in total sales. Wow. Uh, so about four, a little over $480 million in total website sales. And we launched as a brokerage in 2013. So... Well, yeah, 2013. Yeah. So I have to ask you, what started this? You guys said uh, Empire Flippers Capital. Where, where did that come from? Where the uh, idea like people kept coming to you and say, hey, I'd love to buy bigger sites, but I don't have the capital. Yeah. So we had, we had a weird scenario where we had a lot of people coming and looking to buy online businesses. You know, Empire Flippers is a website brokerage, right? We were a marketplace where people can buy yeah. internet companies, anything from e-commerce to FBA to content type sites. And so we had a lot of people who come and want to buy sites and, and people like, I always use my aunt as an example. I love my sweet aunt. She's an amazing person, but she was like, I want to get involved in this. You know, how can I buy one of the online business from you? And I was like, I love you. Uh, aunt, I'm not gonna say her name, uh, but I love you aunt. But like, you just, <laughs> you don't have the skills to run an online business, right? Like that's, you got to go learn the skills first and then you can come buy a business. And people like her that had some money, wanted to put some money into it and just didn't have the skills or the time to run an online business. We had this like, you know, wealthy connection of people that I kept, wanted to get involved, wanted access to the space, but just didn't have the skills or the time to run the business. And we're like, this is a like high quality problem to solve. We need to figure this out. And so we tried to think about like what we can do for this. Like, how do we... How do we solve this problem? And we realized that over time, we have all these people, successful sellers, buyers on our marketplace that have bought and sold businesses with us, in some cases, a few times, in some cases, dozens of times. So look, why can't we leverage that ability and like take those entrepreneurs and pair them with investors looking to make good returns uh, from the space? And so we said, look, as long as those entrepreneurs are putting some skin in the game, right? They get to like leverage up to borrow money from invest, not borrow money, but basically get equity investors in the businesses and they can all benefit from it. And that's what started EF Capital or what became webstreet.co. 
Yeah. Well, I'm just curious. I, I did see this on your site. It, one of the cri- criteria is that the they the investor or the operator invest fifty to a hundred thousand dollars of their own capital. Why why do you have that when they're yeah. already deeply immersed into the business and running the business? Yeah. Yeah. So the reason is is because uh, well, we but also the investors want to know they have skin in the game. They want to know that they are invested in the business themselves. They put their own money in and it's an opportunity for them to leverage up. So, you know, let's say you're an experienced entrepreneur, you've run businesses, you bought businesses before, and you've got a couple hundred thousand dollars, right? That you'd like to invest in a business. You can buy a $200,000 business, or you can work with WebStreet and buy effectively a $1.5, $2 million worth of businesses, leveraging up and getting more equity than you would have a bigger piece of the pie than you would have just buying a straight up $200,000 business. So it's a way for them to scale. Also, what we found is like, originally we thought, hey, we'll get some operators and they'll do, you know, a deal every now and again. But the experienced operators, the ones that are successful, we want them again and again. We want them to do recurring business. Investors want them to do recurring business. So if we can get them in one quarter, maybe they skip Q2 and they come back and buy another business in Q3. So we want them to scale with WebStreet. And as they scale, investors can see their track record because we share it publicly. And so over time, you can learn which operators are delivering the best returns for investors. And to us, like the recurring action of the operators, particularly the successful operators, is super valuable to us and the investors that are involved. Do you take, do investors look at the individual operator's performance or is it as a group as a whole? Because if I get like, hey, it's like uh, fantasy football, I- I'm going to take McCaffrey right now if he's still available. He's not available, right? Like, yeah. well, he Tater is one of your sure. guys that's doing well and he's on your site and I've interviewed yeah. him before. I just yeah. like, I want to put my money ahead versus that guy versus the pool of. Yeah, so we've done we've done a so our, generally our advice is, our advice is to um, instead of selecting the individual operators, we suggest uh, selecting the operators you don't want to invest in, right? So if there's one or two in the particular fund, and, and by the way, I should clarify this: we right now we're launching a new group every quarter, so we'll have between three and six different operators every quarter, and we launch this on a quarterly basis. So of the let's say four or five that are launched that quarter, we generally suggest, you know, either invest in all or maybe take one or two operators that you don't feel so confident in, don't invest in those and invest in the others. The reason being is that you want to diversify across different operators, across different investment strategies, right? Generally, that's going to lead to better results. If you pick and choose, you may end up with someone who gives you a 28, 35% return or you're losing five or 10%. And so it's a little riskier that way. Recently, the latest round, we're actually doing only an invest in all option. So we're testing it out. I mean, really, this is a, aside from Empire Flippers, which is kind of like our main business, this is way more startup style. And so we're iterating and testing different like pricing styles and different like investing options to see kind of which makes the most sense for investors. Yeah, so and- you, you got a, like a mutual fund option here. And then you got, hey, you got eggs in your basket. Just watch the basket. Just a couple. That's right. Yeah, we're testing both options right now. See which kind of makes more sense. Yeah. So let's go a little bit of the numbers here. You have WebStreet accepted applications for 350 operators, and 13 were selected to be in the program. So what? 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 what uh, that's pretty small. That's like what's maybe what? seal small. <laughs> what's the criteria for that? Yeah. 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 So it's pretty strict because it's a startup and because we're so like early, but we're only a few, we're, well, I guess we're a few years into it now and we're starting to get returns on these that kind of start to make sense. But um, we're very careful in the operator selection. That's kind of the critical piece. There's, I don't mean to like dismiss it, but like there's plenty of money out there, even in today's economic climate, right? People are looking, you know, we keep uh, hearing about private equity trillions out there ready to go. Right. Yeah, people people are looking, you know, for returns, right? Um, so there's money out there. Um, I think the really unique thing we add are like successful operators. People have proven again and again they're able to, you know, buy, run, and execute on online businesses. So that's kind of the secret sauce that we have, right? And that's kind of like why we, I think, are uniquely advantaged to like, you know, to put this in place. Um, so we're very careful in our operator selection, particularly early on. As we see it, over time, we're going to have to expand that a bit. We're going to be careful about making sure we expand it and still delivering returns to investors. How do we 
scale that and still have the high quality of operators that our investors are looking for. So we've been very careful um, up till now. Um, as it begins to scale, we're going to have to figure out how we, we cross that barrier. If we want to do, let's say, 15 operators per quarter, or we want to do two rounds per quarter or something, that'll be uh, the challenges we face. That's, that, those are future Justin problems. Yeah, yeah. So 17 funds closed across five rounds. So what, what did you do here? Did you go to accredited investors or are you going to the, you got the affluent, the Uber and the ultra affluent? Who are you going to here? Is it institutional investors or is it just high net, uh, somebody's broker dealer network of high net worth individuals? Yeah. So we started with accredited investors and like, you know, our argument was like, look, we don't want Timmy's college fund in this, right? Like we want to make sure that these are people that are looking for interesting investment opportunities that have some additional cash. They want to put it into kind of like higher risk, higher reward stuff. I mean, th these aren't your blue chip stock, but they're not exactly startups either, right? They're cash flowing businesses. These are our businesses that deliver returns month over month, quarter over quarter for the operators that run them. So but still, right? They're risky, and so they're more risky than a you know Apple stock, for example. Yeah. How, how so, do you quantify that risk? Sorry, interruption, but how do you quantify that risk? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, basically, you know, everything comes with a certain amount of risk reward, and so we're looking for investors that are that are interested in potentially getting 20, 25, 30 percent returns with a, a bit more risk. And so that's kind of what we're shooting for with investors is 20, 25 percent. So there's no guarantee of anything and yeah, yeah, caveat, caveat. But like that's kind of what we're looking for for these investments. Now, as uh, interest rates go up, right, there's more pressure to deliver. Um, higher, investments. You needed a higher RRR. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, we're still fine now, but I can imagine if it, interest rates went through the roof, it'd be more challenging. Um, but like right now, we're fine. And I think investors are super happy with the returns we've delivered so far. Um, yeah, if we're able to continue at, you know, 18 to 20, I think we're at like, I don't know the exact number, somewhere between 15 to 20% cash on cash returns uh, for the investors across the board that we have right now. So that's really good. I mean, I you know I have my personal investments and stuff too. I have real estate or whatever, and like it doesn't How much deliver was that, that again? Kind of, you said twenty. Like somewhere somewhere around fifteen to twenty percent cash on cash. Okay, so roughly on the high end, five years to two x multiple on investment. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're expecting, um, particularly <clears throat> on the exit, somewhere around twenty two to twenty five percent. Now, do you have numbers in there? What that looks like? You 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 have to buy a certain company to uh weigh the risk like it's got to be generating enough revenue it's profitable it's not a distress company or anything uh it's got to be this size of revenue and you see the arbitrage of what it can do and it's got to move in or turn it every two three years what's that number yeah it depends on the strategy of the individual operator so like that's part of the vetting process is we're looking for operators that um that meet a kind of criteria that meet a plan that kind of like vibes with what we're looking for. So the operators that come in and say, look, I want to buy a distressed property and like 20 X the business, but it's a very low chance of success. That's not really what we're looking for. So we're looking for yeah. yeah. We're looking for like, you know, cash returns, dividends. That's basically the types of business we're looking for. And that even gets wonky too, because like a content site, right. is like much easier to deliver straight up cash returns, but there's like some Google risk or whatever. But like an e-commerce business or an Amazon FBA business, um, let's say that business is super successful, right? One with inventory. Then you're con uh, constantly dumping cash into inventory for growth, right? And so like a very high growth FBA or e-commerce business delivers much lower returns. So you're banking on the growth a lot more. And so we try to like, we try to mix it up in terms of like the offerings we have. And we, we're very straight up about that. So like, on a e-commerce or FBA business, don't expect it. Like it may take 12 to 18 months before you start getting like a fair amount of dividends as they kind of figure it out. They kind of like so scale up. So you suspend the dividends for 12, how many? 12 to 18 months? Well, look, I mean, it, even in a content type site, uh, from the time you invest, uh, let's say you invest and then it takes a kind of month or two to kind of close the round, right? And they have a couple of months to up to three months to pick out the acquisitions. And then there's typically a delay between when they start earning and when they actually get those returns. So you typically say around gotcha. nine to 12 months on any business to start getting a return. 
it's even slower for like an Amazon FBA business or an e-com business that has high growth where they buy it and it, it's like on a trajectory that's great because you're constantly reinvesting into the inventory. And so a lot of your profit, a lot of your dividends effectively get tied up in inventory as the business grows and grows. And so there's different, like depending on the business model, depending on the internet you know, type business, there are some that deliver better cash initially than others. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, these are actual funds, right? SEC, legal termination of funds. You go out, then they have cash in the bank, and then the inv- you pick these investors, I mean, these operators, and they say, well, you got $3 million to spend, and you need to spend it by, what's the imperative there? What's, yeah. Yeah, so it's a short timeline, um, which is, right now it's three months, right? And we've had- So they got to have three months. That's pretty quick. It's quick, can, yeah. Can you can you create Sometimes, some kind of characteristics of that are, <laughs> most, most are of unintended so, consequences? Yeah, there's a couple of times where they weren't able. I think at least once. It's happened for sure once, maybe twice, where the operator wasn't able to find the businesses or the businesses they found weren't approved by Web Street. And that's the other thing is that we have to approve the businesses they're going for. Just we we hold some caveats because we're like, look, if you're going for e-commerce business. And you completely, and your experience is in e-com, and you completely pivot, and you're like, "Hey, I'm going to buy content sites or Kindle ebook businesses or whatever." We're like, "No, no, 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 no." I mean, like, you just don't <laughs> have the experience for that. Like, maybe you'd be successful, but like, not in this, not for this fund. Like, that's not going to work. So we do have some caveats on like limiting people, and there were times where people were looking at businesses that just didn't really fit the criteria. Um, but there have been at least once, maybe twice, where we weren't able to. Uh, get the acquisitions under the three months. And in those cases, we just return the money to the investors. Um, so that's kind of the, that's another risk you have to take into account is that your money may be sitting for two or three months while we try to make the acquisitions and can't. A lot of times uh, funds will do like commits where like you're committing the funds. We don't actually send the funds until the acquisition of the deal is being done. In our case, we actually hold the money up front, right? So that's a disadvantage. But the real advantage to the operator having the cash on hand is they're able to move very quickly very and get quickly. deals. Yeah, get deals yeah. that other people might not be able to if they'd only had commits. Now, do you approve the deal structure, the capital structure of how it's purchased? Like, you don't, well, I need to buy, I need to buy 90 or 100% of this company all cash. Like, eh, no, you don't. You know, get you know, 50% cash gets 50% seller financing. Yeah. So when we originally started out, we had all the deals were purchased through our main brokerage empire flippers. And there's an advantage to that. There's uh, uh, some capture on our side because, you know, we are part of both yeah, companies. That's great. Yeah. 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 But like, yeah, you know, what we realized is over time, we need web street to expand beyond just empire flippers, right? Because we want them to be able to buy from a wide swath of businesses. We don't want the investors' returns tied just to like deal flow from our brokerage. We want them to be, you know, more widely available, and so we've opened that up a bit. And so that, that would be, a, I would say, that's actually a, a, probably a conflict of interest to the best interest of the investor. Yeah, it, it is. But like when we're just starting it out, right? We were just starting it out, and we told the investors, "Look, we don't, we don't know if this is going to work. There's three main things we don't have answered, right? Like, are we going to be able to raise the funds to buy these businesses? We don't know." And we were very straight up with that. We don't know if we'll be able to raise the money from enough people. Um, are we going to be able to find the operators um, that are good enough and like are able to you know, um, uh, do the acquisitions and like operate the businesses effectively? We don't know that either. Number three, are we going to be able to deliver returns to the investors? Right. So we've got the first two solved and we're in the process of solving the third. So like from like the first webinars and the first conversations we had with investors, we were just like, we don't know if this is going to work. And so if we're going to do that, like might as well work with the businesses we're super comfortable with. At Empire Builders, we have like a like a operating process that's like super, like we know the businesses, we know how to vet the businesses. Like we've done this for a very long time. And so we know for us, like for sure what the earnings are. And, you know, we, we check all that. We have all kinds of process to make that happen. But if we're buying from, broker Kalamazoo and wherever, you know what I mean? Like I, we got to vet their business. That's a completely different process. And yeah, so yeah. like we had to grow into that. Or yes. like, uh, I'm not picking on, you know, traditional brokers like Sunbelt or somebody like that trans world. And they're selling an e-commerce company, which they're usually selling HVAC companies. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And like, you know, no, a lot of the traditional brokerage I and mean, they have, um, 
you know, they do a lot of like local businesses, businesses with real estate, much more traditional mom and pop businesses. And there's a real need to sell those businesses, obviously. And, and, uh, uh, companies like Sunbelt, you know, they've, they've um, got nationwide exposure. They've got like, they're in so many different markets. That's interesting, but they're not as effective at the internet business as we are. We focus only on internet businesses. If you have a local component, you know, that we're just not interested in that. And like, I'm not saying like, <laughs> there's plenty of ways to make money. And, uh, a lot of uh, those guys, the Sunbelt guys and the other kind of like, um, the traditional brokerage they're like, look, there's a huge opportunity right now with the boomers um, you know, selling their, selling their businesses off, trying to get rid of the, their mom and pop businesses. There's a wide opportunity to swallow us up. And I agree with that. That's true. And that's super interesting. But like the problem with like a local business, you have this like local component, right? So I, that's fine. If you're in, I don't know, Sacramento and you're buying a car wash business in Sacramento and you plan on staying in Sacramento and that's kind of like your thing and you want to run it or you want to be involved in it personally. But like, you know, we're, I don't know. I'm an internet kid. I'm a little older, 40 ish. Right. But I'm still an internet kind of kid. And, uh, you know, I just see the value of like buying an online business and like the sellability is great because you can sell it to anyone in the world. They can run it from anywhere in the world. You're not limited. Right. So you can, you know, instead of having a car wash in, in Toulouse, right. You can have an internet company and go to Bali for three weeks, enjoy the beach, go back to the hotel room, put bang out a couple hours on your laptop and you're good to go. Like, yeah, I, I have to, yeah, I have to mention one of the greatest tools you do because you aggregate all these online businesses. You get a really realistic valuation of the internet business, what they're selling for. Because most people tend to go, oh, I put in 100,000 hours. It's worth $10 million. Well, you're only doing $1 million in revenue, dude. So go to Empire Flippers, put your, stat, your metrics in. That'll tell you what businesses are selling for because they've sold over 1,000. Yeah, we have a valuation tool. If you go to empirebloopers.com, you can take a look at it and like put in your actual, I mean, you can put in whatever numbers you want and you're going to get numbers that are whatever. But if you put in your actual numbers from your business, you're going to get a realistic valuation and a range on what the business will sell for. If you want to hold out and like take a little longer to sell your business, you're going to be at the upper end and you're going to see the range and get a good sense on like what you can sell your business for. So yeah, I mean, you know, there's, there's that one of our real problems at, at I'm wearing both hats today, but like one of the problems at empire flippers, the brokerage is you do get sellers that come in and they say, Hey, I want, you know, uh, $1.5 million for my business. That's what I'll sell my business for. And we, okay, well, let's talk about your numbers. We're like, well, buyers will buy your business for about eight, 900,000 right now. And they're like, well, that's not good enough. Like, well, why? Right. Explain to me. Like, and so we have to kind of be the bearer of bad news in, in some cases. Yeah. Because, you know, everyone has these like, um, look, I don't blame them. I'm in the same boat. Right. Like I think about my business. I want maximum value. I want to sell for as much as possible. Web Street I totally should get sell it. for a hundred million dollars. Gosh, darn sure, it. that's what course. I'd sell for. Yes. Nothing less. Right. Not, yeah. not, not, not 99, not 95, a hundred million only. It's because Mr. B says always anchor to the bigger number. Yeah. Oh my God. We're just like social media stuff. Like we see all these crazy numbers. We're like I can do that too. I mean, one of our kind of things in business is like we, we, we broker uh, online businesses kind of for the rest of us. I mean, sure. You know, there are billion dollar companies out there. There are these magical unicorn businesses where, you know, there's like one person running it or maybe one person, a couple of VAs in the Philippines or India or whatever. And they've got this crazy valuation. Amazing. That's not you. That's not me. That's not most businesses. That sounds awesome. And I'm not saying they don't exist, but most of the time they don't exist. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Most, most businesses are built on people, on process, on like, you know, years of just doing the work. And like, you know, you're going to, you may sell your business for $300,000 or $800,000 or $1.7 million. Maybe that is or is not retirement money, depending on where you live or where you're from. But like, it's a good payday and you can do it again. That's what I think is the key to this is like, look, if you want to sell your company for $500 million and you will not accept anything less, good luck to you. Most of you won't make it. Some of you will. You'll crush it. You'll do better than that number. And those people, they're going to do it anyway. But for the rest of us, having a nice exit at $1.3 million and being able to repeat that process is key. That's the magic. Can right. you build a business, make it profitable? Can you do it again? Can you do it again after that? Can you do it if we gave you money? Could you do it for investors? And can you do it at scale? 
That's the key. You make that win, you're making a shit ton of money. Then you're going to be uh, invited to the uh, Web Street program. <laughs> <laughs> you invite the Web Street program, or you're going to come to our meetups. We'll do a meetup in Thailand. We'll yeah. hang out with you at a villa. We're having a good time. Yeah. So let me let me go back to that uh, question: of, is how you pay, f- how you get the operators to pay for these? What what what's your mandate on that? To say yes, you can buy it 100 percent cash, or no, it needs to be 50 so we can leverage. Uh, you know, debt can leverage the uh, their IRR returns. Yeah. So we tell investors, we tell operators, look, you're going to have to put some skin in the game. I mean, most of them have that anyway. That's not yeah. really a problem, particularly the ones that have been successful. So it's not like we're not inviting operators that don't have cash and don't have a ton of experience to like try to do it. Some of them apply, but like that's not really a fit for us. We want people that have experience that have done it before. In many cases, have sold businesses before. Maybe they're not the best at buying businesses. Maybe they haven't gone through the buying process, but they've built and sold multiple times. And so those are operators we give a shit about, right? Because maybe they haven't bought before, but we can help with that. So like at Web Street, we have advisors that are not brokerage related, that are not even Web Street related, that are contractors, third parties that can help them and guide them and advise them on the best way to, to negotiate and what deals to look at and what, what not to and help them figure out what's the right fit for them. So yeah, in terms of like them buying the business, I mean, it's it's a given that they're going to be putting cash in, but that's not really a problem for the operators we're selecting because they they have some experience. They put money in before. The fact that they're able to leverage up and you know, they're putting in fifty thousand dollars for a million dollar site or a million dollar batch of sites. That, that's so small. Yeah, not a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's also a filter for us, right? Like, if you don't have the fifty thousand or seventy five thousand to put in a million to one point five million dollar portfolio, you probably just aren't the right operator for this, right? Like, look, you can buy another business if you've got you know thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars. Buy a small content site kind of scale up, get some um, experience, right? Figure it out and then do that a couple of times and then we're happy to work with you at uh, WebStream. So what are you seeing now? You tested the uh, from buying businesses from the pool of Empire Flippers listings and then you're going out. What are you seeing now with these 13 operators? Do they just go off market deals or, or do they are they going on market deals, which is at usually at a higher price? Yeah, so I mean... It depends. Right now, we have them shopping at a few other places. So, like, there's some other brokerages, Quiet Light, they're shopping at. We're biased because we're in the industry. And so, we look, I mean, a good deal can be anywhere. So, a particular brokerage might have a good deal. Um, so, you know, they're going to go anywhere to find the deal. But there are some that we know happen to be better than others. And Quiet Light, F International, those are typically good brokerages. Whereas some others were a little more skeptical or sketchy. Well, like we'll take a good deal from anywhere, but like there are certain brokerages that we know that are better. And so we're trying to like stay with the the on market places um, that we know yeah, are I, just going to be. You know what I mean? Um, I got to tell you, it's like there's two places I would look at it was Quiet Liat and Empire Flippers to sell my business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Joe was really helpful. Yeah, Joe. Valley. Yeah, that's cool. And like off offline deals, we're good with offline deals too. Web Street doesn't have as much of a name like as Empire Flippers, and so not a ton of people are bringing Web Street deals directly. Now, Empire Flippers has some deals, right? But like that goes through Empire Flippers. They're separate companies, and so they're not like we don't uh, cross over that way. Like Web Street is run by a different company or run by a different partner. One of the partners, um, Empire Flippers, is completely separate. So like Joe and I actually just just so you know, John, we talked about this, but like uh, Joe and I have backed out of Empire Flippers. We don't work directly day and day, or week a week in the business. We have someone running that business for us, and then our managing partner over at Web Street runs that company. So we're backed out to the investors kind of advisor role now. Yeah. Yeah. So I I do have to ask you that. So you was like, hey, we need to raise some funds so these operators can go buy. It's like kind of like a search funder model almost. Um, What was your elevator pitch to investors? Hey, would you like to invest in some online business and operators? And we'll, I don't know. What's the chance that we're going to lose our money? Well, it's 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like so we're I mean our whole business model, and you know this from Empire Flippers, we're very transparent, very honest and open about kind of like what we're doing, what the risk factors are. And it's changed a bit. I mean, like I think the initial pitch was way more sketchy. Was, oh, look, I mean, here here's the thing. We don't know if this is going to work for you. 
we don't know how it's going to go. Again, the three things, we don't know if we're going to be able to solve these problems, but kind of like, here's what we think we can do. Like, you know, what we want to do is, is you know, in the gambling uh, niche, which isn't the best uh, comparison, <laughs> but like, look, this is kind of like you're going to the racetrack, right? Yeah. And in this case, you're going to be investing in the jockeys. So you're investing in the jockeys. They're going to pick the horses. The jockeys or, and, and Web Street is the one picking the jockeys and giving you a high selection of jockeys that have experience. So let them pick the horses. You don't pick the horses. Why not pick the people that have the most experience with the horses? Pick the horses you think are likely to win. That, hey, that was kind of our like initial pitch, right? And that that's a good makes story. Sense. Because yeah. many, many years ago, when we raised capital for Turbo Squid, Intel came to us and told us exactly that. He says, we don't pick the horses. We pick the jockeys. And they that's invested, funny. yeah, $5 million in that Turbo Squid when we did it. They, that's, yeah, that's the exact cool. story, yeah. So we're in, a, we're in an interesting position now. You're asking how we raise money. We just raise it directly from accredited investors. We just started... And like, I don't have all the details on this, so I can't share exactly, but we just started um, some crowdfunding. So that's kind of like a supplement to it. Is that C or D? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We, we used a company called WeFunder, Reg5 something. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know it's a details. 506 C or D. That sounds it's right. Yeah. yeah. So we threw a company called WeFunder and it was kind of a supplement. And the reason we did it is like, we got beat up a little bit uh, from people. They're like, look, why are you, I don't know, why are you leaving this for the elite investors? Like, what about us? Like, why can we not get involved in this? And we were like, I gave the Timmy story. I was like, I don't want you putting Timmy's college fund in this. I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna put Timmy's college fund. Let me put five grand in. You know what I mean? And I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like we, we want to be, you know, Is that like, the minimum it, investment or you just threw that number out. Um, well, that's what people were asking for, like a thousand, yeah, okay. five thousand. Um, the minimum investment directly is, I think, fifty or sixty thousand. Okay. Um, but we we're asking, so this got to be accredited do... investors, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but they were asking, how can I do like a thousand or five thousand? And we were like, oh, we don't want Timmy's college fund. They're like, well, thousand isn't Timmy's college fund. Like, I just want to be involved. And and they kind of beat us up, and they're like, look, why are you making this super elitist? Like, you know, you're a company that like supports regular investors like you guys came up that way like why are you keeping it from us and i was like shit man that's a pretty good point so um <laughs> so you adjusted your pitch kinda. Go, he's right because we're selling e-commerce companies to people that you know it's two hundred thousand to a couple million so yes yeah so we're like why? well here's the thing too so like we have um uh, buyers and sellers whatever that are buying uh, larger businesses but let's say they just want to put a few thousand dollars uh, let's say every quarter into uh, let's say your content site builder or an SEO, right? But you're deep in SEO, you're deep into content sites and you want exposure to e-com, right? You want to put in 5,000 a quarter or something like, why not give them an opportunity to do that? They don't want to learn e-commerce and so they want to learn and buy a $200,000 e-commerce business. They want to invest in people that know how to run and have experience running e-commerce businesses. And so they diversify that way with their online businesses. And so it's like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Um, so that we did that. And look, I mean, look, long-term, and this is the kind of like secret. These are the kind of behind the scenes backdoor conversations we're having is that long term, we think it's really going to be institutional money in the space. Right. So like our, our, our view is that it's the operators that are key. Um, the institutional players are going to get involved uh, and they're going to put in the big money. Right. They're going to, we're going to have a, we're going to have a fund of money that's kind of like uh, pre buying the businesses. And then we can sell a piece of that. But our thought is we always want to carve out a piece for like both our original investors and the smaller investors. And so our plan going forward is to always have a piece of the companies, a piece of these businesses that we're setting aside for our audience, our early investors, so that they can get a piece of it too. Maybe it's funded majorly by or majorly by the uh, the um, investment companies and the, the large institutional buyers. But then we'll just carve out a piece for our audience. That's kind of where we're coming from. Yeah. So uh, just a word of caution, and this may happen, may not happen with the bigger checks, is that they are, you know, they're they have more leverage and they're can, can be meaner versus a sure. whole bunch of little checks that yeah, yeah. they have voices, but they don't have enough to have a lot of power. We looked at this with Empire Flippers, where we were considering, we were looking at. Um, uh, venture capital. We talked to some private equity groups at Empire Flippers. The VC companies wanted like, I mean, their requirements for growth were just through the roof. Like they wanted us to risk it all. Yeah, they this twenty percent like, IRR. 
that's you're not even in Nothing. the right ball field. They don't care. If you're not ten xing, it doesn't matter. You're a loser if you and don't even 10X, though 10X business. If they have thirty portfolio companies in their deal, twenty eight of them will not they, make that. They yeah. don't give a shit. If you're not ten x or more, you don't matter. You can five x and you're a loser to them. They're like, yeah, so right, whatever. Right? What do you mean we five x our business? So yeah, VC is a crazy beast. And look, there's a need for it, right? There are businesses that. Uh, without capital that's like super competitive or there there's enough research that needs to be done ai is, a, is a, a good example but like there's so much research so much work that needs to be done behind the scenes so the payoff is so potentially high that it just it's only a vc funded model right but then there's like the private equity groups which are a little they're they have their own requirements but they're less strict less miserable than some of the no, no, VCs no. I mean, can that's be 20 percent to 30 percent irr that's what they'd be looking for they're interested in a five-year yeah. turn yeah and then there are also like there's debt options too we've talked to um recently we've talked to um some debt companies about how can we um involve that but with rates going up and like double edged sword know. there it amplifies yeah. your performance but also pretty hard on the cash flow it's higher risk for Web Street too, so we've held off. But like, yeah, we need to we need to get a little further in the model, I think, to to play that game. Yeah. yeah. How did that those first conversations with investors go? Like the first one you had, and goes, oh, okay, I'm gonna write you a check for that. Like, it, how, it, how'd that go? It wasn't as bad as you'd think because we were so straight up about it. I, I think if we were like, I don't know, if we did the whole like let's say we're doing the road show, like the podcast road show. And we're just like, oh, we got these crazy returns, no money involved. You're going to cry. Like that's not, that's, it works for some people, I guess, maybe, I don't know. But like we went to our own audience, right? And we First. said, look, yeah, yeah. Like, we're like, yeah. here's who we are. You guys know who we are. And like, we had them raise their hands if you're interested. Like if you're interested in this, we don't know if it's going to work, but you'll be our first investors. We're going to give you, uh, preferential access to like future rounds if you want to get involved and we're going to be transparent about it all along the way and if it works that's awesome we'll have a nice little and this is kind of a thing like i i think and i see it now kind of where i'm at uh, personally but like it's fun to get involved in funds that are kind of crushing it it's like something you can tell like your peers i like, got we have other entrepreneurs i'm in like masterminds and peer groups whatever I'm like, yeah, you know, I got this investment. It's pretty cool. I'm involved with these guys. It's kind of fun. And you talk about it. And so I'm at like the small ball game of that. And so if you're worth 50 million, 100 million, you're talking about that at the country club. It's kind of a fun, you know, bullshitty, braggy kind of thing to talk about. So that, that, that's, that's where I think they're at. Yeah. Let me ask you about the, the size of the business. Now, Let's take Mohit Tater. I had him on my show, and normally he buys uh, a business X size. I, I don't really know what the size is. So you're on your site. It says no. If you're an operator with us, you can four X your leverage, meaning I can buy something four times the size of what you're talking about. But what if the operator hasn't doesn't have that experience to run a five? Let's say five X rounded up, five X larger business. Yeah, so we look at it. I, you know, I couldn't tell you exactly what the requirements are on like the operator selection, but like if you've been successful at like buying, you know, five thousand dollar sites and turning them into twenty thousand dollars, you're like, hey, I want to buy five hundred thousand. I want to buy three five hundred thousand dollar sites. I think I need the same thing. It's not really the same ballpark. So we're looking for people that have run or grown businesses that are in the ballpark. What's that ballpark mean? I don't know exactly. I can't give the specifics, but. And a good example would be, yeah, if you're buying five or ten thousand dollars small type content sites and trying to buy, a, you know, ten x or hundred x a larger business, that, that doesn't exactly apply across the board. Three to four x, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Four to five x, it's in the ballpark. Yeah, I mean, in, in some instances, I wouldn't say all, but in some instances, we have people that already have portfolios of businesses they're running, so. They've got teams, they've got some economies of scale, they've got finance handled, they've got customer service. So in some cases, like service businesses or um, uh, you know, some uh, businesses have like specific SEO requirements, they've already got a team of people in place to kind of handle the changes there. So those are good operators. Sometimes it's just a partnership or a trio 
that have got a couple of businesses under their belt and they're looking to add more. So it depends. I mean, but yeah, they, it has to be at some level of scale that makes sense to the businesses they're looking to buy. Yeah. So and we talk the, about, so like for every investor, like they can see, um, they can see the operator's track record. We share what they've done previously. Uh, there's an interview with the operator. So you can hear directly from them what kind of their plan is. So, so got the investor gets to interview the operator? Uh, no, we no. interviewed the operator. We, oh, okay. we interviewed the operator. Uh, but we've asked, you know, we try to ask challenging, interesting questions so that they have a good sense of kind of who the uh, operator kind is. Kind of testing his knowledge. Yeah, you, you want a sense of like who you're dealing with, right? And like from, from us at WebStreet, we we care, we want you to invest, but we don't particularly care which one you're involved in. So like, you know, if you like this guy or don't like that guy, it's, you know, we're not biased in terms of who you pick. We want you to work with us, but like, we don't care who. So we're trying to like give you the best sense of the operator so you can make the most informed decision. Um, and then we've also got, um, we lay out their thesis. So whether you agree or disagree with kind of their plan, in some cases, you know, the operator's buying an e-commerce business, they're like, look, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not going to be doing distributions for a while because I really want a business that's fast growth. And so it's going to be 18 to, you know, uh, 21, 24 months before we're able to do dividends, right? Or, um, you know, I want to buy a business that's ca that's um, bloated and I want to cut costs and get, you know, distributions out. Yeah, really just quickly. So reinvest the profits right back into the business. Maybe I can 5X this business in a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they lay out their thesis and you kind of like choose the ones that, that you buy. Again, like I said before, like our fund now or coming up soon. I'm not exactly sure where we are with it. But so it's are you be... on the road show again asking for money? <laughs> no, no. Um, but, but well, I, honestly, John, I don't really do this. Yeah. Uh, Mike, our operating partner, normally does the interviews. I'm happy to do it because I don't know. You reached out, and I, I'm happy oh, to do it with you, you. But like, I don't, I don't do the uh, the the circuit generally. I'm not that pitch man for it. I'm just, uh, yeah, just here because. I like you at a previous uh, conversation. Like it's fun because I sold a business to you, and you made some money from it. it that's could helpful. Be it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we made money together. It's good. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's cash. Hey, I got a question. Are some of these investors asking for a step up, some kind of multiple on their money on uh, liquidation preferences? Sure. I mean, you know, <clears throat> we get um, specific requests all the time, and and honestly, we just. It is what it is. You're getting what we have. We don't do a uh, special treatment for any particular investors. We probably will have to, depending on the amount of money that eventually may go in. But like, it's a very standardized process from an investor perspective. And we, we have to keep it that way. Otherwise, it gets really messy uh, for us. And we, we oh have invested at different levels, getting different preferential treatment. And like, so we keep it very standardized. Now, for large like institutional investors willing to put in $20 million into the next, you know, and they want one point seven x. Oh, your yeah, the, your okay. dollars worth a dollar seventy six. Really? Okay, we'll we'll do some <laughs> we'll do some deals for much larger amounts. But I mean, if you're putting fifty, hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, it's the same exact deal. Yeah, cash on cash. I gotcha, man. That's fantastic. So uh, where do we go? Oh, oh, where does John, it? I'll, I'll, I'll do one more thing I'll mention. You know, it's funny because like when we originally set this up, like cash on cash returns, like a, a distribution of dividends, like that's a winner, right? What we're, what we find is like for some investors, not all. Some investors love this. They're like, yes, that's the thing I want. Or like for my portfolio, that's what I want. Some investors don't love it at all. They don't like the tax implications. They want. They would prefer we take the distributions and just dump Keep it rolling in the them over. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's interesting. And like we're seeing that and we're taking that feedback and we're like, okay, can we do something with that? We have nothing in place right now for that. But like our thought is, is like, how do we how do we cater to that audience? So we're like just trying to listen to our customers and our investors and say, okay, what can we do for them that kind of makes the ones that aren't doing it because of that? Um, how can we do something that makes sense for them? So right now we're really a distribution, like you know, cash on cash, deliver cash, returns uh, business. But we're we're trying to cater to those customers too. We don't have anything yeah. yet, but we're working on it. I do have a question now that you're going for bigger checks and these guys are not as familiar or these people are not as familiar with the types of investments they'll be making versus your audience of, you know, ex empire flipper buyers and yeah. sellers, right? Now they're asking completely do different questions. I mean, what, what, what does that look like? I mean, I know that you're not in the road shows. You have somebody else doing that, but uh. <laughs> yeah. So we we um, we've had a few of those conversations and been kind of told, ah, wait and see. So we'll wait and see. We want to see track record. 
right? Mm -hmm. So we're just getting to the point now where we have enough track record, enough returns to where they're starting to come back and we're having, we're opening the door to more conversations about like actually have, getting them involved. But we haven't done it yet. So we don't have the institutional money. We don't have that yet. We're still working on it. We think it's probably 12 to 24 months away before we have enough track record. We haven't exited the portfolios yet. So all the businesses that we've purchased from all of the rounds are still on the books. And so what we want is a full clean break, right? Where we've done the deal, we've done the returns, we've got the exit, we've got a full return for the investors. So once we can do that from portfolio one, portfolio two, and we're working on portfolio three, we think, um, we think we'll be in a really good position to do that. But we're still probably, we're looking to sell like the first businesses from that, like in Q4-ish. And then probably next year, by the end of next year, we'll have another uh, number of businesses sold and, and be in a position to do that, I think. I do have a question from your website. Do portfolio managers receive a salary? From the um, No. No. And why yeah. is that? What's the rationale for that? Uh, the rationale is they're getting a um, – they have skin in the game. They're getting a big enough return on the deals to where we want their uh, focus and interest and incentives to be aligned with the investors as closely as possible. And so rather than paying them uh, a salary, uh, we want their incentives to be aligned with the returns the investors are getting. So that, that's our thinking. Okay. All right. That's fair enough. Yeah. Awesome, Justin. That was fantastic. I loved it. Cool. Yeah. Are we good to go? Good to go. Let me hit stop and it's going to up. I hope this video has inspired you. If you need help buying your first million dollar business, make sure to visit me at dealflowsystem.net. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe down below. Comment on it, share it, tell everyone about it. And thanks for watching.